Hey folks, welcome back to the combo class for another little video done in live format because today not only do I want to chat with some of you as usual, but I have some cool announcements, some fun facts, and we have some classroom things to check on, such as a wild amount of broken glass that occurred yesterday and some better things for the garden, such as in my little gardening corner, we're going to check on how the worms and isopods are doing. Now first, let's take a peek at what sort of damage occurred here in yesterday's filming session. Now, when we get up to some snack break episodes, sometimes it's a little more chaotic because I'm less distracted by my whiteboard. And yesterday's episode involved a cactus fruit. And the last time I tried a cactus fruit, I peeled it very carefully, holding it with tongs. But this time I read that if you burn the outside of it right, you can burn off all of the little micro spike things called glockids or something. Glockids or glockids, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But the little glockids on there, you don't want on your hands. You touch that thing, you'll get these little splinter-like mini cactus spines in your hands for like a week. But in yesterday's episode, I skewered it on a thwork, which is what I call a three-pronged fork. I don't know where the thwork... Oh, here's the thwork. The thwork is in the broken clock. So I skewered it on a thwork, a little, little campfire, and burnt off the spines. And then I was able to eat my cactus fruit just by peeling it. And as you'll see in that snack break, it actually worked. Afterward, I have like one little micro spine I noticed in my finger, but nothing compared to when I actually touched one of those before. That was hell. That was terrible. Now, it did end up being on a clock that I lit the fire because there's a lot of leaves and dirt on the ground, so I didn't want to just light a fire on the ground. The desk's made of wood, so I didn't want to light a fire on the desk. And so I figured, oh, a clock with a big glass face. That'll be a perfect place to make sure that the fire's contained and doesn't touch any leaves or anything. Now, I forgot that glass is kind of sensitive to heat. And so while I was filming, I just had a nice campfire going. And then right at the end of the clip, I realized like, whoa, the clock shattered. <laughs> the heat at some point shattered the clock. Um, and it was one of the larger clocks, as we can see here. And yeah, there's the thwork. The thwork ended up in here somehow. Yep. So we used this to skewer a cactus fruit, cut the spines off, and I'd say it was a success apart from this. This right here will require a little cleanup because I think there's also glass all over the ground. Now that wasn't even the only clock that shattered because there's already a half broken clock that was broken, but the shards were at least in one place. And then some stuff fell on it in the episode. Now that clock, which yeah, you can see one of the things that fell on it was a potato, uh, is really shattered. So we got glass in the classroom. It's a combo glass room today, unfortunately. So one of our tasks today is for me not to get too sidetracked while I tell you the other stuff I want to chat about because I need to be 90% focused on chatting with you and 10% focused on looking for shards of glass so that no future camera people step on them. So the other thing we will check on after I collect my glass shards, which I'm going to say that this big old shattered clock right here is just going to be, uh-oh, is just going to be where we put the glass shards. So we'll set this on the ground and use, use it as our little glass shard collection zone. Because already we can see right here that there's like a lot of deadly shards right here. You don't want to trip over these. Um, so, remember that shattering clocks does have hazards and requires cleanup. Normally, I've had to do all the cleanup on my own, but now I get to clean up while well, you have to watch. Ha, ha, ha. Now, let me take a peek at the comments first before I keep just going glass hunting. Hello, everyone. To whoever's asking what the live's about, um, in addition to collecting shattering glass, 
Of course, I'll be sharing a few weird math facts. I'll be making a few announcements that will be coming on Combo Class in December. And I will be checking my bin full of dirt to see if the worms and isopods that I put there yesterday are still there. Because not only did I film a snack break yesterday, but the end of the snack break was related to my quest to grow future snacks in the combo classroom in that wooden planter thing in the corner by the clocks. And so I put some more awesome compost in there yesterday. Didn't find quite as many worms as I did once, but I found a lot of isopods. Those little roly-poly guys. So last time I put a bunch of dirt and compost in there, the little guys like vanish. I don't know if they crawled out of it last time or if they're hiding in the corners or something, but we'll see if there's any of them still hanging out in the bin. If there's not, maybe we'll grab some more compost. Now, let's see what else we got here. Some awesome comments. Thank you all. And nobody missed the clock fire because it's not posted yet. Um, once I, which I'll talk about later, once I launch like a Patreon and stuff, I'll have some place where some of my fans will get to see clips right when I film them, where I'll post some stuff early. Uh, but usually now, if I film something really short, it comes out that day or the next day. But if I film something nice and long and epic, that's going to take a week or two in the editing stack to get to you guys. Um, now... I'm sorry for breaking time. My apologies. Time, you know, if I shattered it in any weird way that any of you are from the past or future, although actually viewers from the future are pretty possible, but if any of these comments are from the future. Now, uh, I apologize for shattering time. Let's hope we don't hit any paradoxes. Or maybe let's hope we do hit some paradoxes. Paradoxes are pretty fun. Now, I will be careful. Don't worry. Um, I'm picking up the glass in a way where I'm I'm pretty sure I won't cut myself. I, I, I'm clumsy when I'm just talking about math and when I'm just like wandering around the classroom. But when I'm reaching toward glass, I retain a bit of non-clumsiness. So uh, someone else had to clean up some last week as well. Their door or something shattered. That sucks. Glass can cause a lot of chaos, but it's also pretty cool and scientific. So someday I'll get us to like a glass blowing lab and we'll do some glass blowing uh, science. And we'll also maybe just do some more precise science about what will or won't shatter glass. Now we can flash back if we ever need to investigate anything about glass breaking, anything about fire combustion, anything about gravity calling, causing things to fall. Uh, well, we have plenty of semi-official investigations in that already done on the combo class. And in fact, I would love for somebody to go through all the combo class episodes and tell me what they can demonstrate about gravity or about combustion or about uh, proving that all of my antics were science all along. Um, so... Someone says they're from the future and my lab coat's covered in blood, but uh, but it isn't mine, so don't worry. Now, don't worry if my lab coat's ever covered in blood. I'm sure that it was from some savage beast that tried to attack me or something. Uh, I'm a person of peace. I will not draw anyone's blood unless it utterly came down to it. Um... So no worries. I think if I have blood on my lab coat in the future, there'll be a good reason. Um, now, someone tried to make a microfruit salad and was delicious, but took too much time. That's awesome. They tried it out. People could watch my last stream or the one before or whatever, where I gave three different fruit suggestions that I will show you guys in the future. But I had to just tell you about them for now, about three weird ways you could approach fruit. And uh, the microfruit salad does take a while, so it might need to be prepared bulk. You might need to make it for a party, you know, because when you make a bunch of something, you can make 10 times of the thing with twice the effort often. So it might be one of those things you, you don't really make a single serving portion of too often. Um, someone mentioned the Mad Hatter of mathematics. Ironically, I don't usually wear a hat, although now I'm wearing my gardening hat because this hat puts me in my gardening adventure mood. So uh, uh, then I'll be in the mood to touch a bunch of compost and stuff. Plus it's cold out. But if Mad Hatter relates to weird clocks and other surreal aspects, totally down. Alice in Wonderland is great. 
and I would love to throw some surreal tea parties someday. Now, for fans of Alice in Wonderland or fantastical tales like that, what I highly recommend is the version of it that's a surrealist stop-motion film by this foreign filmmaker, Jans Fonkmeyer, uh, and his version of Alice in Wonderland that's called Alice is insane. Someone's wondering what I do with my gardening adventures. Now, there's a nice yard out front that I share with some neighbors as well as with family but some neighbors who are just random renters over there as well from a nearby house. So we have a shared yard with a bunch of cool stuff that I've contributed to helping grow, but I'm not necessarily the main cause of that because a lot of them are fruit trees that were already here when I moved here. So I've planted some of the things in the front yard and helped with that, and then they have helped me get fruit. So that's what I do with my gardening adventures is uh, do a tiny bit of research, plant some stuff, not really an expert in botany, but just do a little bit of research, try my best, and sometimes get something edible out of it. Because I think it's a pretty marvelous feeling to just be able to walk out in your yard and eat something. Um, so that's the goal over there in the little planter. But also what we're planting is stuff that I think is going to sprout funny. So once these sprout a little more, this potato, I have more of these around too. A few potatoes, a few onions. I got a little garlic clove somewhere. And once they sprout a little more, I'm going to put them in. The onions will actually grow green onion sprouts. So they're edible. I don't know what the potato and garlic are going to do. So those might be more just to look at a cool thing growing. Uh, and there also could be random plants that pop in because there's travelers in the compost. There's seeds that somehow make the plant go. And uh, last time there was compost put in like a planter in my yard, random stuff grew in there like nasturtium flowers, these nice flowers, mint, um, strawberry. Um, these things randomly just grew out of the compost. So we could get random travelers in the compost there too. Then I'll probably look up one or two other edible things that aren't too huge, like maybe put some tomatoes in or something, because I need something that doesn't take up too much room. Like it's just a little planter. I can't make like a fruit tree, but some little uh, vine or shrub could be cool to put in there. Because the goal is to be able to just like in the midst of a lesson or right after a lesson out here, turn to the side and take a little nibble of a snack that is 100% fresh. Um, now, one thing that I want to take you guys on an adventure next year, that is that feeling of like, ooh, it's cool to pick fruit. That's nice. Well, I've shared the ones in my yard and we'll get a little more of that in the next snack break because I also snack on some guavas and stuff in addition to the cactus fruit. But one of the most epic snacking on nature potentials around here is blackberries. Uh, where I live in California, there's like an invasive type of blackberry that's sort of like not that good for the zone. Like if you're a gardener, you really need to keep it located in the zone and not let it spread too much or its roots won't let other stuff grow. It's really good at spreading. But there's these spots at the marina, like three or four miles that direction from me that... Um, have these huge patches of blackberries that if you go at the right season, there's a few weeks where there's essentially infinite blackberries, by which I mean that there is a such a large number of them that you don't ever really encounter your limit. The Your limit is essentially your time, your ability to get pricked by thorns a few times, and stuff like that. Your ability isn't related to there being a quantity of them because the quantity is never ending. You could just go like five feet down and there's more. And so someday we're definitely going to have, and we probably have to wait till next year because I missed it this season, but, and that was because I was getting surgeries, but next year I'll be able to for sure walk around the marina and we're going to do a blackberry snack break and see what we can do with infinite blackberries. And that's an interesting concept to think about. To what degree is infinity even different than quantities that you never really approach the end being a factor? So someone here has a cactus. One of my friends is really into cacti, and I might have him uh, make a little guest appearance in the snack break. I already filmed the snack break, but I might have like a 20-second clip of one of my friends who has a bunch of cacti explaining better what the little spikes on the... Um, the micro spikes called glockids on the cactus fruit are and what they do. Uh, he was the guy who, when I first mentioned them and I was like, those things suck. 
he was like, no, the Glockids are really cool. They're awesome. They're the cactus's unique way of protecting itself. And I still think it's weird they put them on the fruit if they're trying to spread the fruit. But maybe birds are better at dodging them and birds spread the seeds further or something like that. And so uh, all I know is that uh, I'm now medium on Glockids because although they hurt me in the past and I did do a whole fire technique to dodge them this time, they are just a defense mechanism and the plant gets to do it. It has the right. Now, someone said it's tough to grow fruit up where they are, but they're trying to set it up. It's There's always something you can grow in your climate. So to anyone who wants to grow something, uh, your limit is just going to be what you can grow, not that you can grow something. There will be something suited, unless maybe you live in Antarctica. Then sorry, tough luck. Um, most climates around the world, they have their own things that work well there. Uh, I haven't done a huge amount of research, but I know that apart from blackberries where I live, there's a few types of fruit that do better than others, like um, certain stone fruits will get recommended over others. Um, I think tomatoes seem to do really good here. Probably you can guess also by what California is a huge exporter of, like California exports a ton of strawberries and tomatoes and artichokes and a few things that those probably grow really well around here. Um, so someday I want to have a gardener on my team. Like someday I want to have a property where I fully own the garden part and have a gardener on my team so we can collaborate and they can make it better than me. I'll pitch some cool ideas and like graft a bunch of fruits, make a little hedge maze, go a little crazy with it. Um, and no, the cactus video has not been released. And when I filmed it last night, uh, maybe once I get a better team of editors, people can always reach out. And I do already have some editors uh, from afar I'm going to work with, although it's harder to do it through digital than when I know the person. But I am going to be working with more editors soon. For now, it takes me like two weeks to get the episode fully edited because it's either me or one or two of my friends. So... That will be coming out in a little bit. First, there's a Crazy Factorials episode coming out this week. And then next week will be the Cactus video, um, which they should be about six days apart from the last episode about spiky shapes. And then six days after that. And the Cactus video will be dropping on December 1st, which it is probably time for me to do an announcement, which is um, that'll be it. It's a kind of bad video to put the pitch in because in that video, I'm just destroying stuff and eating snacks. But at the end, it does include a little announcement that when that drops on December 1st, I'll make this really quick. Sorry, guys. Promise it's cool. I'll be launching a Patreon for people who have asked to support me and for people who have asked if I teach any private type lessons. So there will be a higher tier on there where there's going to be a smaller group discussion with me done through something like Zoom. Uh, that's going to be uh, like a discussion with a small group of people and me that's more like taking a class with me directly. Um, and you'll get a more fundamental understanding than you might get from just what I managed to put in the videos. Uh, but that'll be a higher tier. Most of you may be able to just go for a lower one, which will give you just a bunch of cool bonus videos because I have like millions of hours of content between probably on the lowest tier will be all the stuff that I ha film and haven't edited that you'll get sneak peeks early. And then a little above that, people will get like a bunch of behind the scenes of the combo class, like the full takes of me destroying stuff, unedited and stuff. And then a bit above that, you'll get all the crazy footage from my past that's not necessarily combo class related. Just like crazy adventures I've filmed, a lot of unreleased comedy stuff and music stuff I've made. So, um, and someone's wondering like, yeah, how much they'll be able to do. So the lowest tier is just gonna be two or three bucks. I can't make it one buck because the way they take fees out of it, one two dollars is way more than twice as helpful as one dollar because the fee makes one dollar like two thirds of a dollar as opposed to two dollars might go down to like one and two thirds or one and a half of a dollar so big difference um so it'll start at two or three bucks to get like early stuff of videos and just support me and help and then probably like about five bucks to get like um a bunch of extra behind the scenes combo class stuff every month and then maybe more like 10 bucks if you want like your name mentioned once in a while in videos. If you want the chance of talking to me one-on-one, -on -one, like I'll call a few people from the list per month. And if you want to get like crazier footage from my life that's not combo class related. And then it'll probably be more like 25 bucks or something for people who want to like join the private class I'll be doing a few days a month. So, cause that's more like, it's a mix of supporting me and signing up for getting a class. Um, 
So there'll be those options probably. And then for fun, just in a blue moon, I'll probably put a tier on there that's like 100 or 200 bucks if somebody wants to be called a co-producer. Very unlikely, but if anyone wants to like have their name super attached to the project or feels very charitable because hopefully people will know that the money they put there will go toward a great cost. I have a very low uh, amount of money I spend on myself. I eat really cheap food and stuff. I love putting all my money into educational videos. And so all the money there is really just going to go toward making the videos cooler. And hopefully the group lessons will slowly let me replace my day job right now, which is teaching random one-on-one -on -one lessons to music students and stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to filter that out, do more group stuff, and just be in combo class mode all day. So, um, cause like later today, like I have private lessons just to have enough money to pay my editors and stuff. I need to teach private lessons. Um, so that'll all help. I'm going to launch that on December 1st, because if I launch it now and people pay for a class, they're getting ripped off. They're only getting one. If I launch it December 1st and you pay for a class, I'll be hosting three of my group classes in December. Um, those will be on Sundays and I'm going to try and put them in like to me, the early afternoon so that more time zones have them applicable. But sorry, if you're across the world from me, it's going to be 3 a.m. and I can't do anything about that. But, you know, I'll take suggestions if people want to move that anytime. But for now, it's going to be like Sundays in my late afternoon. But I also I'm just stacking all of my crazy combo vault of weird footage that I want to show you guys. I've had a lot of weird projects in the past that will probably make their way onto there before they ever make their way into maybe a few years down the line i'll edit some of this stuff into bonus videos but some of it i don't know what to do with or i'm embarrassed by or it's too crazy for youtube or whatever uh but i've had hours and hours of like musical projects like comedy skits of like adventures i've gone on like this and that um so there's a lot of fun stuff to share now that's enough about that i'll launch that on december 1st thank you all for not leaving while i was ranting about that Let's get back to some stuff that's happening right now that's free because, of course, my goal isn't to draw money out of people. My goal is to have more time to make more free education. And someday people will be going to comboclass.org and there will be all sorts of puzzles and games and resources and stuff. So uh, what instruments do I play? A comment was asking. Uh, so originally, let me give you a little story of my music history. I took piano lessons when I was a kid. And then I got into, I was started playing piano, playing covers of rock songs and then writing my own rock songs with a band I made in about sixth grade or so, which is here is about your 12 or 13 or so. Uh, so from when I was like 12 to 14 or so, I was still taking like a couple piano lessons, but mostly spending my time on playing in this rock band with two of my friends. And I was a piano player um, and I had a bassist and guitarist friend and we, uh, should have had a drummer, but we didn't know anyone, and we uh, would just put a drum beat in the background. And so I have some old recordings of that. We played one or two shows, and we have some old tapes, like literal tapes, on an eight-track recorder we recorded. And then I stopped piano lessons, because uh, my parents let me stop it because I was doing enough music stuff, to start making digital beats on GarageBand, and I got really into programming little beats and soundtrack type sounding things. And all of the music in the combo class videos these days, um, from the, all the episodes from the beginning, it was most of the music, but it's been all of it in the past like five episodes at least or so, has been beats I've made for fun. And those are just the beats I made in the past two years. There's a lot that I was making before that. And then I got really into singing and rapping and especially went down a rabbit hole of loving to rap. Spent a lot of my day freestyle rapping with friends. I ran a studio. I released 13 mixtapes in 2013. I passed out an album of my own self-produced rap music at the last week of high school to people in the halls and stuff. I um, released a lot of crazy stuff under a few different names, which weren't Demotro or Combo Class. And then... Um, so I had a, a few different interests. I was making like some rock songs, a bunch of hip hop songs, some instrumental stuff, a um, bunch of random collaborations. I ran a little studio, all sorts of people from the Bay Area would come through here and record with me. Um, I have like this one track where I had every rapper just rap two bars, which is like two measures is like, you know, about like five or 10 seconds. Um, and all of them, I got like 30 different people to each rap like five seconds. Um, 
I need to release those someday. Some of those are still unreleased. And so uh, I also learned other instruments. I forgot that in the mix while I was playing all that stuff. I learned guitar from taking a few lessons and teaching myself. Um, and then I learned like other stringed instruments like ukulele and bass. And I played clarinet in band, but never stuck with it. Like in school where like you take a few years of band or orchestra. Uh, so like in school, I did clarinet for a few years and that didn't stick with me. So I never really went down the rabbit hole of any woodwind or brass instruments. Um, and I can play a little bit of drums, but I'm not a great drummer. I'm better at programming a drum beat than playing it live. I can like kind of hold down a beat live. Um, and so really, I would say I play piano, guitar and bass and ukulele. Those are the ones I teach. But I also, when my students get pretty good at those, I try and steer them toward also thinking about the options of digital production and about songwriting. I've written billions of songs. So I you know, like to teach my students to songwrite as well. Not like there's one way to do it, but different ways of approaching uh, ideas of how to put a song together. Um, I will before long, and I'll do it like pretty soon on the Patreon and then a little later for everyone else, release links to the ones that are already out. Because some of that stuff I mentioned is out online somewhere under a different name. Other of that stuff isn't even released. So uh, I'll, I'll put that put that linked up somewhere before long and what i do have to say in advance uh for the hip-hop ones all my rap verses sorry if anyone gets offended i use swear words i use certain you know brag like rap tropes and so uh now my rapping style is a little different i don't really feel the need to swear much in my rapping now i can still convey the emotion my rapping is a little more in tune with my personality and what you know from videos and stuff now although it's still just music not math um but sorry if anyone gets offended from the old stuff i like making crazy bangers and i like saying things that are wild so sorry um it, it's not like anything insanely bad like i'm not using like it's not anything you wouldn't expect from me but like you guys haven't heard me swear or anything or like yell brag like stuff in the way that a rap verse is sometimes constructed so uh it'll be a little different but it'll be fun got some bangers in there and i also have many other genres of music i've written and someone's saying if i've uh, considered making music about math well many of my verses especially nowadays have little references to mathematical things but it's not trying to teach math it's more is there a way to make you know I might use a math term because I have those going through my head a lot, but it's going to be related to some form of casting a surreal, confident uh, atmosphere in the verse in a different musical zone. So it's not to teach math, but there may be words that, you know, you'd need to know some math to get the punchline of my verse or whatever. Um, I find it kind of cheesy if you try and make educational music sometimes. That's really hard to do in a non-cheesy way. Maybe someday I'll do that, but right now I have a lot more fun where my music is trying to be funky or a banger and or a great melody that's sweet or whatever. And my other stuff's to teach. And they have some commonality. It's Venn diagram, but they also have some differences. Um Someone's wondering if any is on streaming services. And yeah, some of my stuff is released, but it's on different names. Um, so I'll, like I said, I'll link that to like some of the low Patreon tiers right away. And I'll link it to all you guys when I'm less embarrassed in a little bit. Um, and that's a good idea that I could set an insane sequence to get the link. That's a good idea. I could make like a custom link that has a really long number in it and make you have to crack it. I want to do that on comboclass.org someday when I launch that, where there's some really cool pages that have sort of a password to get in, but the password's a number that it tells you what you're looking for. So it'd be like, what's the eighth semi-prime number? And then you'd have to like go to the semi-prime page and then do a little counting or whatever. Um, so one's wondering my favorite Spider-Man actor, and I don't know anything about Spider-Man actors. I don't watch many movies. I remember seeing Spider-Man 2 in a theater with my friends because my friends were going to it way back in the day, way long ago when I was super young. But I hadn't even seen Spider-Man 1. So to me, the Spider-Man I know is the one from cartoons. 
So I don't really know any of the live actors that much. Um, I'm unfortunately not going to get many of people's movie references. I might get some of your like comedy TV show references because I watch like some comedy TV shows, but mostly I just watch YouTube and read books. So I don't know that much about Spider-Man. Um, all right. Seeing if there's any last comments before we move on. And I think our next thing is going to be, um, Ooh, and I just got to go back here to, a note that someone's mentioning worm farming is going to be one of their projects and um uh sorry i'm just making sure there's no other ones i feel like i'm glad to um comment to some of them when i feel like they haven't been answered in a stream before and if i skip your comment uh, it's probably just because i answered something similar in a stream before um but what i do want to mention is the person talking about worms i am hoping that when we dig in the dirt there in a minute we find a worm or two like I said, they like vanish. I don't know where they go. They like hide in the corner or something, or they like, they might have left. Maybe they knew where the compost bin is and made a little bee line back to it. I don't know. Maybe there's a little line of isopods marching right back. But um, we'll take a look in there in a minute because yesterday on film, as part of the snack break episode, I did get a bunch more compost and put it in there. And the first time I got compost, there's more worms and some isopods mixed in. This time there were a bunch of those little roly-poly isopod guys, tons of them. Also some beetles, some little black beetles that I let crawl on me. They didn't bite me or anything. And I'm trying to promote that a bug that doesn't bite is your friend. Even like one of the main ones I want to get people less scared about is moths. Some people get terrified by moths. Now I get it. If it flies in your face, kind of spooky, kind of not that fun. But there's big old moths that come in my room. And I kind of like them. I don't mind them. What's the worst that happens? It bounces off your face and gives you a little startle. So pro moth, pro beetle, apart from if there's any pinchy beetles. Um, very pro ladybug, very pro worm, very pro bee, neutral on wasp, very pro isopod, although in composting worms are even better. So um, someone's wondering my favorite math branch, like number theory, et cetera, and I'd probably have to say number theory. Number theory, playing around with integers and sequences and solutions to integer-based questions. Uh, that's pretty beautiful and fun. I think those are some of the patterns the universe is made of. Now, I also really like other fields, like geometry is awesome. Triangles are so fun to study, stuff like that. I also really like logic. When I was a kid, my favorite field, or like middle school, I was like 13 or whatever, my favorite field was logic and puzzles about it, paradoxes and puzzles. Um, and there's other fields that are absolute delights. Um, so I, I would say number theory would be my current favorite. That's the one I'm going down the rabbit hole on. So let's take a look at some of the dirt after i take one last glass thing because there's little ones too so these little ones are practically worse than the big ones because you don't spot them then they sneak their way into you now glass can really get you cut that can be bad sometimes now this might be a special surprise just for some patreon people you guys haven't even seen just because glass cuts remind me of this there are two massive scars on my body because I had to get two hip surgeries this year. I have a big old scar like there and like there. So <laughs> maybe I'll show the uh, not, ones of you who don't find too much gruesome those scars. They don't look that gnarly. Like they look kind of just like a line, but it's like a big long line. <laughs> um, so... I also showed you x-rays once in a short, but I need to get more x-rays. It's weird. They don't give you your x-rays online at Kaiser. You have to ask the doctor to print them or send them or something. So um, I need to get the x-rays because it looks like I have a massive old screw in there. And by looks like, I'm assuming the x-ray is accurate. So I'm assuming I actually do have a massive screw in both sides. The part in me looks like they like fixed part of the top of the bone with some fake bone that they like merged with it or stuck in there or something. Then they have like a fake ball, of like the ball of where your leg goes in your hip that's partially ceramic. So I'm a ceramic Borg. And then there's this massive screw coming out of the top of it that I don't know what it's supposed to do, but apparently that's in me. And I asked the doctors, 
is this going to set off metal detectors? And they're like, I don't know. Well, who do I ask? So I literally don't know if I'm going to like go to, I haven't been to an airport yet. Next time I go to an airport, I'm going to have to see if I have to like go through some special line or something. So although maybe I can get a little card from the doctor that says, no, this guy just beeps metal detectors. It's his hips. And then I can bring anything through a metal detector and just flash my card. Hmm. I'm just kidding, cops. Okay. So let's get a few more pieces of glass. So I feel satisfied with cleaning up the zone a bit. And then we're going to look in my dirt. Now there's also just all these like uh, burnt parts of, this is burnt cardboard, but there's also burnt parts of desk. Like check out this, this was part of the desk. What I tell you folks, if you can still see the desk, it's not fully broken. Now the curve